are fevered with the sunset, we are fretful with the bay, for the wonder thirst is on us and our souls are in cafes. There's a steamer in the harbor with her engines shot with fire and our hearts have gone aboard her for the island of desire. En route to the fragrant isle of Java, we cross the equator, an imaginary line which has been drawn around the earth midway between the north and south poles. Ships that cross the equator usually celebrate the event with appropriate ceremonies staged in honor of Neptune, the god of the sea. Passengers who are crossing the equator for the first time are summoned to appear at the court of Neptune, where, with fiendish glee, Neptune's chief justice meets out punishment for the victims. Those who submit to this initiation are awarded diplomas, which stipulate that they may cross the equator peacefully on all future occasions. This particular ceremony, however, did not work out according to rule, for the usual routine was suddenly reversed, and the whole court of Neptune was most unceremoniously thrown into the tank. After crossing the equator, we continue on to Batavia, the chief seaport of Java, the most important island of the Dutch East Indies. Over 300 years ago, a colony of Dutch immigrants settled in Batavia and gra gradually extended their authority until for a time, they practically monopolized the foreign trade of the East Indies. Great Britain gained control of Java for a few years, but finally returned it to the Dutch. Local self-government, economic betterment, and popular education are some of the benefits enjoyed by the natives as a result of the present-day colonial policy of the Dutch. As in Holland, the Dutch have built canals here for the purpose of transportation, but apparently this one has been turned into a municipal laundry. Practically every day in the week, this canal is thronged with men, women, and children washing clothes. And this may be one of the reasons why the Javanese are considered to be a clean and wholesome people. The native Javanese dress is called a sarong. It is of a soft, velvety texture and comes in many varieties of color. But brown and old ivory is the combination which appears to be the most popular. Java lies in the tropics under an almost vertical sun. Consequently, ice drinks are most refreshing. This drink is made of cracked ice over which is poured a quantity of fruit juice. Wherever we go in this tropical island, we see the natives carrying baskets balanced on bamboo poles and so weighted as to necessitate a half trot to keep the baskets in place. The chief occupation here is the cultivation of fruits and vegetables which are carried to market in this manner. As in most oriental countries, the native dead are usually carried through the streets like this. of the population is distributed over the country in villages like this. 
As soon as the village grows to a considerable size, it sends off a score of families to start another community. Incidentally, Java has a population of about 700 people to the square mile, which makes it the most densely populated island in the world. In spite of the tremendous population, however, food is plentiful. The elements are seldom extreme, and the people as a whole seem to be quite contented. The botanical garden at Buitenzorg is a veritable paradise for the traveler as well as the botanist. In this lovely garden are assembled beautiful specimens of plants and trees gathered from all parts of the world. A mild and even balance of rain and sunshine and a fertile soil have made Java a natural garden for the cultivation of nature's most delicate plant life. Situated in the very heart of this exquisite garden is the estate of the Governor General. These giant lily pads have been known to support the weight of a small child. Not far from this beautiful garden is a tropical sea, constantly overshadowed by curtains of clouds. The breezes which blow from the island of Java waft an enticing fragrance to our ship as we reluctantly sit. And here we say farewell to the fragrant isle.